Okay, folks, welcome back. This is the ICT Mentorship Price Action Model number 12. It's a scalping model, and its focus is 20 pips per trade. Okay, see so ICT Price Action Model number 12, a scalping model, 20 pips per trade. The stage used for this model is a daily range expansion. Order blocks and fair value gap is the setup. Internal range to 20 pip price runs is the pattern. All right, so the daily range expansion, what we're going to be focusing on is the identification of the likely or most probable direction of the current daily bar or candle. We're going to be focusing on order blocks coupled with a fair value gap. Now, right away, you're already thinking, oh, I've heard this before, Michael. No. We're going to be waiting for an order block to form then an expansion swing to unfold. So what we're doing is, is we're waiting for that order block to facilitate a expansion swing. So while we qualify valid order blocks or high probability order blocks with fair value gaps, sometimes an order block will form a down close candle near a, an important key level from a higher time frame level. And that down close candle may not necessarily have a fair value gap. So we're filtering that with any down close candle that was at the beginning of a initial expansion price swing, then it has to be retested. Okay, that order block gets traded down into. Then after that takes place, the expansion swing that unfolds after the retest of the order block, we are then looking for the fair value gap. And again, internal range liquidity, we're going to be utilizing that in the form of internal range liquidity pools to facilitate an entry in the direction of a simple 20 pip price run. Now, right away, your mind's probably thinking, okay, all you're doing is talking about the same thing you've already talked about in recent months. Before I get into it, I want you to understand certain things here. I've taught you how to qualify, in my definition, a high probability order block. They are coupled with a fair value gap linked directly to the candle. This model is not suggesting that at all. What we're doing is showing you how to find fair value gaps in the middle of price runs that are not directly related to or close to, necessarily, a order block. The question is, is what gap do I use? I'm getting that question all the time. And I promised everybody this would come to you if you just waited. Okay, there's a lot of other things we're going to build on, but this is one simple measure. Now, it, right away, your mind should be turning. This isn't limited to a scalping model. While I am presenting it in a scalper's presentation, it's not limited to that. It's not certainly at all limited to 20 pips. If you scale this up to larger time frames, the model will deliver larger pip hauls, okay? Or the profit margins will increase in terms of pips relative to the time frame you're looking at it. Okay, so our first example here in this very, very brief model, because there's really not a lot to talk about because everything I'm going to say here, you've already learned in the core content. So this is the euro dollar. Okay, and the model is built on, for scalping, five-minute charts. Okay, so we're looking for a directional bias. I've already taught you how to do that. Uh, when the bias is bullish, in this case for the euro dollar, we could see a bullish order block here. Now, notice this down close candle right before this big move here. There's really an absence of any fair value gap. Now, does that make that a low probability order block? Well, in terms of my definition, yes. Now, will I be wrong? Yes, and that's okay. Why am I okay with being wrong? Because I know this model will give me the entry patterns that I'm looking for that won't give me the fair value gap. In an ideal world, we want to see this down close candle create some kind of a gap here. There isn't one because this comes down, closes any likelihood of a gap. So this one here won't necessarily have my attention right away. What would I be waiting for? This model. Watch what happens. The price comes back down, slams into the order block, this down close candle, the last upper portion, okay, in other words, the highest portion of the candle or the high 
to the midpoint or mean threshold is what I'm highlighting here. Now, in full order block theory, we would use the entire candle, but I like to use the upper portion because that's where the most sensitivity is going to be. So price trades down into it. Even at this moment here, I don't have to be a buyer. In fact, I don't want to be a buyer there with this model. What am I waiting for? I'm waiting for the order block to prove there is expansion. Okay, so there's an expansion swing here, taking price higher. Inside this price swing, there's a fair value gap. Right here. One single pass through, one candle, previous candle's high, next candle's low, there's your fair value gap. This candle's low is what we frame the fair value gap's high. So all it needs to do is trade to this price or lower, and we could add the spread, and we can be a buyer there. This is what happens here. This is the order block fair value gap coupled for this model. Notice the distinction here. This down close candle can't be referred to an order block in the sense that what I taught as a high probability down close candle with a fair value gap above it. Okay, that would be the ideal high probability order block. This order block or down close candle has the gap inside of the candle. See? Difference. Okay. So the distinction is that we want to see price show and willingness to want to rally. Why is this pattern powerful? Why is it even being mentioned? Why does it have its own model? The reason is this. Smart money bought down here. I may have missed that. You're going to miss it. Okay? Price comes back down into it. I may not still see it here. But if I see the price react and it creates an expansion move here, I can see that the narrative is, okay, they bought here off the order block. They did a huge accumulation of orders here. This one I may have missed. This one I won't miss. The expansion move, I go inside of this range here and find where's the fair value gap. Well, there it is. Which gap do I buy? That one. Using model number 12, this is what you're looking for. Price drops down into the fair value gap here. We know that there's a displacement here, and there's a displacement here. They have kept price in a relatively small range. Small ranges bring what? Large ranges. As a scalper, intraday, you want volatility, you want directional impulse. This is what you're looking for. Coupling both order block, expansion, swing, then fair value gap formation. By the top of the gap, or in this case, the low of this candle here, you have a little bit of drawdown, not much at all. I mean, very, very, very modest, very modest drawdown. We're talking like one or two pips, okay, if you're, if you're adding that, minus the spread, obviously. Price runs, the shaded area is 20 pips. Now, this uh, price swing, if you look at it, it actually went higher in a day. The only thing I'm showing is a 20 pip run for illustrative purposes. Let's look at another example here. After buying that low, you can see very, very nice, handsome price action. Another euro dollar. You see price comes down. That last down close candle. No fair value gap to, to speak of in here. Price creates a impulse swing. I may miss it. I may second guess this. I don't know what's going on. It's got double bottom formation here. We know there's a likelihood of what? A potential stop run. So I'm not having this really on my radar yet, but watch what happens. Price drops down into the order block, and then we have expansion. Okay, so we have the expansion swing in here. My eye goes inside this range, and I want to see where's the fair value gap. There's the fair value gap. And yes, in this sense, we do have the high probability order block with the down close candle with a fair value gap. So right away, you know this is the likelihood of a potential bullish order block. But if you had used that theory, would you have gotten filled on this? It never got down there. But model 12 gives you the entry pattern. Fair value gap here. There's your entry at this candle's low or just below it, plus spread. 
beautiful 20 pip expansion and well beyond. And I left this over here just for uh, context, relative equal highs. And you can un you can incorporate other models, take profits that you need know, to use for additional pip, um, pip objectives. Don't limit it to 20 pips. So obviously, if you can get 20 pips, bank that, take 80% off, and then look for other models to overlap with target theory. So wherever price may lead to relative to what you've learned in other models in the core content, look for those as additional runs for liquidity. But this model specifically is dealing with 20 pip runs. You're not trying to get to absolute low. You're not trying to get to absolute high. All you want is bread and butter. Give me 20 pips. Thank you very much. Next example here is the guppy, which is pound yen. Up close candles here, all one order block, price trades down, comes right back up into the order block, and then we have the proof in the price swing. We have an expansion price swing lower. So my eye looks inside this range here. Where's the fair value you got? This one down here is too low. It's, it's not enough for me to want to chase that because we're too far extended. Last two up close candles in here. They may want to make a run up into these up close candles in the form of bearish order blocks. So I would never want to look for like this here as a fair value gap. I would want to look for this price high down to the low. Think in terms of your PD array matrix. The high to this low, split it in half. It has to go above or at the 50% level to get to a equilibrium or premium level that would be filtered for this right here. The fair value gap is here. So fair value gap and this candle's high or just above it would be your fill right in here. And the shaded area constitutes a 20 pip run. Factoring spread and slippage or whatever. The point is, is all you're looking for is that 20 pip bread and butter setup. Bear shorter block hits it, expansion, price swing, we're looking for the fair value gap then. That's the protocol. So we're not forcing a, a, a perception of, okay, I want to look for every potential fair value gap and I'm going to trade it. No, you do not want to do that. And if you've tried doing it recently, since you've learned about fair value gaps, you've probably encountered that conundrum. <laughs> so some of the algorithmic theory that we'll cover in 2020 are things like this, where certain things have to happen in a series of uh, or a specific order, then an outcome should be reasonably expected. Okay, so it helps you have more prognostication. It gives you perception. It gives you depth of understanding about what you're seeing in terms of price action at the moment and not just guessing because there is a, a logical theory behind why and where price reacts and trades from. Uh, this actually has another example here that I didn't have, but as I'm talking to you, I'm looking at it right now, I went right to it. Uh, we have the last two up close candles here. Price trades down away and comes right back up into the bearish order block. And then we have what? Then we have a, an expansion swing. Fair value gap right there. There's your fill. Think about this range here, the shaded area, 20 pips. From here to here, there's 20 pips. <laughs> okay, it's right there. I, I didn't include it because I wasn't looking for it, that one in the same day, but the same day it gives it to you again. Same pattern, same concept. You look at an order block or you can wait and catch it after. In other words, you're not always going to need to anticipate these setups. Many times you're going to catch it after it does this, where it starts to run. This is the reason why I say we don't chase price. We do not do it because there's going to be a procedure that will allow you to get into the marketplace at a fair value, hence fair value gap, and that's what's happening here. Now, how far into the fair value gap it goes is going to be dependent on your broker, and that's the reason why this pattern is set to trading at the low of the fair value gap for shorts and at the high for longs, okay? Because every spread is gonna be different. Every broker is gonna be slightly different. Some brokers may come all the way up and fill in this gap 
Some of them may go up to consequent encroachment. Some may just tap where the gap is. Well, in this case, a fair value gap that's bearish, it would be the low of the gap that's what you're looking for, for your entry. That may be all it does, and it never fills that gap. So that's the reason why I created these models in, in the way I have, because it's meant for you to get a fill with your demo, so that way you can build experience and not miss a lot of the price swings. Whenever we're trading fair value gaps, we allocate the underlying risk that would be associated with the gap filling. Okay, so our 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 stop would be above here, but we are allowing with money management to endure, if you will, any closure of that gap. So that's going to be factored in. Granted, that's a default when you're using the stop up here, but it's not the same thing from mentally seeing it happen. When you're in the trade, you get short here, but it comes up and fills the gap. You're going to be afraid. You're going to feel fearful that it's going to keep on running. You just got to stick to the protocol and trust that the stop's going to do its job, and the gap may just close, and that's all there is, or it may go to consequent encroachment, and that's all there is. Okay, our last example. This is cable. Uh, we have the last up close candle, bearish order block. We have price create an impulse price swing. Price comes back, trades into the order block here. Now we want to see what? We want to see the expansion price swing here. The impulse price swing is the initial displacement. The retracement is the retest of the order block. Then the expansion move where price really starts to get accelerated. This is where we do not chase it. We just simply wait for the fair value gap to form. We have a fair value gap right here, right here, okay? And with that fair value gap, we wait for price to come back up into this candle's high, which is the fair value gap's low. Your short entry is there, and 20 pips is just the shaded area, and it does a whole lot more, obviously, here. When we look at this model, it's one thing to say, okay, there's a fair value gap. Here's an order block. Okay, I want you to go back and look at examples of every potential pair that you are considering in your career. Right now, you know, you may have just a few because I've told you so, but eventually some of you are going to get really comfortable with looking through a larger portfolio and other asset classes and you'll start to see this pattern form on higher time frames and this could be your bread and butter setup for like a 15 minute time frame and doing intraday swings it's not limited to a five minute chart remember price is fractal it allows you to do it in every time frame this pattern still works on daily charts too so if you're a position trader or a long-term swing trader it, it it exists there as well okay so don't think that I'm just giving you a, another day trader or another scalping technique and I can't ever use that Michael why are you wasting my time with this every one of these models are scalable you can expand them or reduce them to lower time frames down to a one minute chart it's completely up to you but the theory behind it and the narrative that's used is the same okay now in closing some of the things that make these setups better or higher probability is obviously within a kill zone within institutional order flow that's directionally derived in other words what is the directional bias in institutional order flow on a daily chart if you're trading with that direction and inside of a kill zone and this pattern forms man is it a loaded deal it's just one of those easy low-hanging fruit setups it's a very very easy model to find a setup with and it's one of those models that are very forgiving because some of you are complaining that and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's normal for you to say, I, I can't see this real time. Well, this is one of those very forgiving models where it kind of like acts like a crutch, okay, or training wheels. There is an order block there. You may have missed it. And it retrades back to the order block, and then it starts to move away from the order block. And you feel like, oh, man, I want to chase it. Don't. Wait for the fair value gap. When the fair value gap gets filled or trades to there's your signal that's your entry technique your pattern and then trade it and take 20 pips out now how would you use this with a larger uh, price action model or a larger time frame model uh, you just don't look for that 20 pips you just look for 
simple uh, opposing PD arrays. That means if you're bearish, you're going to be looking for the very next discount array that will allow you or facilitate a healthy profit margin. What is that? Well, I don't know what your stop's going to be. They're all going to be different. Obviously, you can see that every one of these setups here has a different scale in terms of pip per stop loss. So if your model is going to force you to be a 5 to 1 setup trader, then obviously you know you want to consider that and where your scalings are going to be. Uh, that's going to obviously skew the 5 to 1 modeling or gearing that you're, you're trying to employ. But you always want to find some way to create some first level of scaling. This model is a one-shot entry, give me 20 pips, and leave a very, very small portion on. That's how I'm presenting it here. So if you were scaling, um, say, say you did uh, one standard lot in the form of 10 minis. You could take eight of those minis off at 20 pips whenever you get first profit in the scalping model. Leave two minis on to see if you can get anything else additional price movement for the next PD array, whether it be you know premium array when you're going long or discount array when you're going short. Don't try to make more of this model than I just told you. It's very, very simple. It's very easy. And like I said, it's very forgiving because it allows you to, you miss the boat, okay, on the ideal entry. Because the ideal entry would be selling up here, okay, or selling up here on the first fair value you got, right in here. So that fair value you got gets closed, you can sell short, but then you have to encounter all this consolidation to get to the bearish order block, retest, there's a short optimal trade entry, price expansion, beautiful uh, symmetrical price swing, then another retrace, back into now the fair value gap. Price runs again, standard low, how many pips below that, do all your projections, 10, 15, you know, you know the model, and you can get the low here. So you can take 20 off, 20 pips off here, with eight of the 10 minis on a one standard lot gearing, but two minis would be on board to capture all the remaining portion here. So you can, you can expand this model also to use as entering a larger term price move. You can actually use this to use additional entry uh, technique. In other words, if you have a larger price swing, say, say for whatever reason, maybe you were lucky enough to get short up here, you can use this model to add to an existing position. Okay, so don't think that it's limited to a scalping model. It's you're, There's so many ways you can use these models, and they'll dovetail once you get to know what, what all of them can do over time, and when you can plug and play certain ones. Obviously, this pattern here is very, very specific. It re requires you to do certain things in terms of waiting, and the price has to prove itself to you. And a lot of you may really resonate with this one because it's a very easy model. Very, very easy. It's highly visual and it's principle based. And even in its core bare bones, you know, just the skeleton with no more flesh added to it like we'll do in 2020. When we start going back through these again and creating more of a trading plan type thing. Whereas right now I'm just giving you an idea. Okay, it's a model. To, to discern where you are in one of these models. And you can build on it, flesh it out. By itself, I've given you enough to be a trading plan. Everything I've just explained to you in concert with what I've taught you about money management and t uh, take profits and how to work within the PDRA matrix, it's you have, a, you have the entire trading plan right there. The only thing I haven't done is go by step by step using the the criteria that creates a, a trading plan. I'm just having a conversation with you. Like, I'm assuming, because you have experience with me now, and you have experience in the market, I can say what I've said to you, and you can take that information, and it's okay, I know exactly what he means by all that, and I'm going to formulate a trading plan. Don't be discouraged if you don't feel that way. That's okay, because that's what the next round of going through these price action models is going to do. We're actually going to sit down and put detail behind everything what is it we're supposed to be doing with all these individual models? Once that's done, and you go back through them all collectively at the end of next year, you'll feel much more confident about your understanding about price action as a whole. 
And this is just going to be one small little facet in the greater whole of your understanding as it comes to price action. So hopefully you found this insightful. Until I talk to you next time, wish you good luck and good trading.